Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Ram 1500, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms. But before we get into that, why don't we just check this out, make sure it's gonna work for you, and just uh, take a second and refresh yourselves on the main parts that we're gonna to need to even flat tow our Ram down the road in the first place. There's gonna be a total of five main components that you're gonna need. The first one will be your base plate, and that's gonna provide us with a solid attachment point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. Tow bar is gonna be the second component, and that's going to be the physical link that actually connects the front of your vehicle to the back of your motorhome. Third main component will be your safety cables, and these are there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. They're gonna keep everything paired together. The fourth main part will be your tow bar wiring. And what this will do is transfer the lighting functions from the back of your coach to the back of your pickup, uh, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main part will be a supplemental braking system. And what this is gonna do is apply the brakes in your Ram whenever you hit the brakes in your RV, helping to bring you to a more uh, predictable and complete stop. This is what your Ram will look like uh, whenever you have the base plate on and you're not actually hooked up to your motorhome which I do think is important because you're not always gonna be flat tone, right? And with this setup, I feel like it's about as good as it can look. Uh, really on the front of the Ram, you don't have a ton of openings and spots where you could put something like this. So uh, these come through these existing holes if you had tow hooks. If you don't have tow hooks, there would be a panel here that you end up popping out, but it'll sit in the same spot and um, essentially be the same thing. I think it's relatively easy to get to. Um, and it doesn't look too out of place by any means. I do like the fact that they have pre-attached brackets on each side of the base plate, which will allow you to mount up some of your other components like this uh, wiring connector, for example. And that makes it a lot easier because with the space that you have to work, it would be a real pain to try to make a bracket or anything like that. So uh, definitely speeds things up a little bit in terms of getting everything put on and uh, looks a little bit better. Whenever you are ready to use the setup though, uh, it's pretty straightforward and I feel like that's important. You don't want to spend a bunch of time messing around with it. Uh, and that's because it has these removable arms, okay? So you can pull out the plugs that they give you out of the base plate to keep them protected. So you pop them out and then you take the removable arm and this is just going to go in to the base plate. You rotate it about a quarter turn like that until it locks in. The other side will be set up the same, and once you have both of them in, this is going to give you the attachment point needed to hook your tow bar up. When you are ready to hook up, you're just going to take the tow bar, line it up, put the pin through, the other pin in there, and that's really about it. This one though, I think I might flip it around just so we have a little more clearance for our electrical connector there. So this base plate will work out with uh, most Blue Ox tow bars. You want to make sure you have this three lug type end on yours. Uh, it can work with other manufacturers uh, tow bars as well uh, by using an adapter. There's a lot of different types available. So check that out if that's your case. And even the wiring connector, you know, for given the space that you have to work with, uh, everything's really not too bad to get hooked up. This is what your flat tow setup can look like whenever you're all hooked up and getting ready to pull behind your motorhome. And if I had to suggest one thing, um, it would be to get a tow bar that's a little bit longer in length. And I say that because on our, on our truck here, our attachment points are pretty wide, right? Which I feel like it'll help track and keep the truck actually true and going straight behind the motorhome. But since it's a bigger vehicle like this, you know the tow bar arms are spread apart so far you don't have a ton of distance in between the front of your truck and the back of your motorhome so by having a tow bar that's a little bit longer in length uh, should really uh, help out with that and there's also one thing uh, i wanted to mention too which can potentially help with that and that is the use of a high low adapter all right which is this piece here so in our case, you know, it extends out from our motorhomes hitch a little bit and makes the attachment point for our tow bar a little bit further back. 
Um, so that definitely helped there. But this is also going to help make sure that our tow bar rides level. Because in some cases, even on a bigger vehicle like this, your base plate attachment points are gonna sit lower than the hitch on your motorhome. All right, and you want your tow bar to ride level. And so to figure that out, you wanna measure from the pinhole there on your base plate down to the ground. And you wanna have your vehicles parked something like this, you know, on level ground. Record that measurement, do the same thing on your motorhome. And you want that measurement to be within three inches of each other, right? Um, and there's all different types of sizes available um, that, that you can go from. In our case, ours was about four inches lower, so we used a two inch high low to get everything within that spec. And especially important too, on a, on a truck like this, uh, a little bit heavier, you wanna make sure that all those components are properly rated to even be able to tow your Ram in the first place. Other than that, at the end of the day, uh, this is a good option for those of you trying to flat tow your Ram. As far as installation goes, this one really wasn't too bad. Uh, I will say the hardest part is just trying to get the bumper off and putting it back on. It's just tight and pretty heavy. So take your time at that uh, and it's uh, something you should be able to do. But if you'd like to see how that's done, feel free to follow along. We'll go ahead, pull into the garage and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the front of our truck and just in front of the front tire along this wheel well edge, we're gonna have a few bolts that we need to remove. Here's those three bolts right there. And I'm gonna use an eight millimeter socket. Once those are out, if you follow, you know, our wheel well liner in towards the truck, there's gonna be two more bolts that we can pull out. Here's those two bolts I referenced. And with these, using an eight millimeter socket again, have that other one out this will drop down we can set it to the side and i want to mention from this point on anything we do to this side of the vehicle we'll also do it to the other side because it'll be set up the same way now if you move underneath the vehicle you can take off the nuts that are holding on our bumper so uh you're gonna have three on each side so one here one here and then there's one on the top over there towards the inside of the truck that's a little tricky to see uh, but they're all going to look the same, 18 millimeter size socket is what I'm going to grab and we're going to pull it off. Here's the third nut that I talked about just on the inside of the frame. Not a ton of space there, so I'm just going to use a box wrench uh, to, to break this one free. move over here to the driver's side we're gonna have an electrical connector we need to disconnect uh, it's gonna look like this you're gonna have a red tab that you pull out on that and then there's a this gray handle and right in the middle of it there's a black tab as well so you push down on the black tab lift up on that handle and that should be all we need to disconnect it So get them two separated like that. Now with an extra set of hands, we can get our bumper off. That should be all the hardware that was holding it on. Granted, you might have to kind of work it around and you know find that sweet spot to where we can actually get this off. So it seems like if we're lifting up on the bottom first, that seemed to be the trick, but we'll set this off to the side out of the way. If your truck has tow hooks on it, we're going to need to remove them and these won't be getting reinstalled. But you're going to have a 21 millimeter bolt. And pull that out. And then an 18 millimeter bolt here. And that one you don't actually have to pull. Uh, all the way out, you can just kind of push the tow hook back. 
Come to find out, these are gonna have to get uh, pulled out and this uh, rubber bushing piece will have to get removed. A lot of times though, when you loosen these up, they'll kind of just, you know, not want to come out any further. So when that happens, you can take a hammer and kind of give it some assistance there. To get it out. And then you can take off that piece and then we're gonna reinstall the bolt. Now we can grab our base plate and get this into position. So these are gonna be side specific. Uh, so check the instructions, make sure you got the right one. And these are just gonna sit on the bottom of our frame rail and then you can take this factory bolt, put it up through there. And I'll go ahead and get it started. And eventually we'll pull this back out and put Loctite on it. But for now, that's what we're going to do. You hold the base plate flat. Just snug that down. Now we can use our base plate as a template to drill out our holes. So we have one right here. And then there will be one on the bottom side of it as well. Uh, take the appropriate size drill bit. And go right through. Here's the other opening on our base plate on the bottom of our frame. So we'll go ahead and get this one opened up as well. With both those holes drilled out, now we can get our hardware in. So just this bolt, split lock washer. I'm gonna put red Loctite on these. This isn't going to come with the base plate, but you can always grab some here, D-Trailer. And this will go through. Essentially inside of the frame rail. And then you take a handle nut that they give you. Essentially just a nut attached to a handle. And get in there and get it started. And I'm going to use the same technique and same hardware combination to get the bolt that goes on the bottom of our base plate as well. So now we need to take a three quarter inch or 19 millimeter socket and snug the new hardware down. And once those are snug, we'll switch out that 19 for a 21. We'll pull this bolt out that we uh, put in earlier. At this point, you're going to put your red Loctite on. Put that back in and snug it down. And finally, don't forget to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all of the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. Once all the hardware is torqued, the remaining portion of the handle nut, you can trim that off. So just a good pair of snips. And then what I've done is installed the safety cables. So they give you this D-link here. You wrap your cables around the frame and then connect it to the base plate. And then what I like to do is just take some zip ties and kind of zip tie up the, the slack portions of it. That way it stays put and it's not gonna you know, rattle around and clunk whenever you hit bumps. At this point, it'd be a great time to start working on some of your other flat towing components like your wiring and braking system uh, because you got all this extra space to work. It makes it a lot easier if you already have those done or you're not gonna be installing them just yet. Uh, you can put the bumper back on and everything the opposite way that you removed it. I do believe uh, there's a little bit of trimming that you have to do to clear the, the base plate, but we'll get to that. Um, if it's necessary, I'm going to get the other parts on and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to actually get the bumper on and how it fits and everything else. Once you have all the other components on the front of the Ram, 
uh, them like we talked about we can get our front bumper back on it does say that these uh, little brackets here we do need to trim some of that material out so the base plate will clear so i marked that out be careful with this wire here you know you don't want to hit that this is pretty thick metal so you can use a, a rotary tool a dremel uh, you, you know whatever you got to cut through here uh, this multi tool actually is working pretty good for me so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get all that material removed. So I went ahead and got that material cut out on both sides of our bumper. This is how it turned out. I did put some black paint on that bare metal just to keep it protected from rust. And with that done, now we can grab a friend to help us get the bumper put back on. So go ahead and very carefully get this back into position and if it fits without any modification great if we have to make some more adjustments I'll go ahead do those and show you uh, how everything turned out I was able to get everything resecured and the bumper back on without having to really modify anything um, I did take our electrical connector loose and our breakaway switch loose just to kind of get a little more working room because it is tight getting this thing back on uh, so you want to get it lined up and kind of push the bottom in and then roll roll it into position there uh, almost exactly the way we we removed it uh, but other than that everything looks pretty good fits uh fits nicely and that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the blue ox base plate kit on our 2022 ram 1500.